Welcome back everyone. My name is Joel Feld and today I wanted to discuss the concept of optimizing the space on your Mac, iPhone, or iPad either locally on that device or through iCloud and iCloud Drive, iCloud Photos, and all of that. If you're looking to free up space and you're wondering how the optimization works, hopefully this will help. Here we go. Before we dive in, I want to take a step back and define what the actual goal is. Part of this is related to the Mac that doesn't have anything to do with the cloud. This is optimizing the Mac storage physically on your computer so that you can utilize the most potential of your hard drive space and file management and finding large files and all of that kind of stuff. And it's very helpful to know what files are taking up the most space so you can either remove them or move them to an external hard drive or upload to a cloud system like iCloud Drive, Google Drive or Dropbox or whichever cloud service you tend to use. I want to start on the Mac first and then we're gonna jump into the settings that are specifically designed for iCloud Drive and the optimization that we have for there. So let's go ahead and dive in and then we'll move to iCloud Drive and the mobile devices and the whole cloud conversation. On my Mac, I'm gonna start with going to the system settings. Might be system preferences if you're still on Monterey, but I'm on the current latest version of Ventura. And under system settings, we want to go to general on the left and then storage on the right. And this is where it breaks down all of what is taking up space physically on this Mac locally. It has nothing to do with the cloud. It's physically what is on this computer. So at the very top here, we have a visual graph that kind of breaks down the total amount of space and how much is used. So as we can see here, I have a four terabyte internal hard drive on this Mac and 3.79 of it is being used. In the red, it shows documents, orange photos, and all of these other ones, apps, trash, messages, so on and so forth. Below that, it has some recommendations for us. And these are just saying, hey, if you turn the setting on, we can automatically free up space on your device, but we wanna know what it's actually doing before we just click these choices. So the first choice is store in iCloud. And it's specifically talking about the photos and videos that are within Apple Photos linked with iCloud Photos. It says store all photos and videos in iCloud Photo Library and save space by keeping optimized versions on this Mac when storage is needed. So if I clicked optimize here, it's going to prompt us and say, do you want to optimize all photos and videos in iCloud? Essentially what this means is instead of keeping the high resolution, largest quality file on your computer physically, it's going to save that high quality photo in the cloud, but keep a very tiny lower quality on your computer. That way you can still see all of your content on your device, but it's not taking up that space. If you wanted to edit a video or view a video or edit the photo, when you open up that photo within Apple Photos, it's going to download that high quality so that you can use it and work with it or print it. And then after 30 days, if you don't touch that photograph, it offloads from your computer back up to the cloud, but still keeps that little tiny thumbnail so that you can still see your content and the photos and videos that are on your computer, if that makes sense. They're optimizing the file size and the quality to free up space for things that you don't use for X amount of time. This setting is within the Apple Photos preferences too. So I'm gonna choose cancel here. We're gonna open up Apple Photos. And if I go to photos in the top left, I can choose settings. And this is where I have the general settings, iCloud and shared library. Now underneath iCloud, this is where you have that choice also. So currently mine is set to download originals to this Mac. Depending on how many photos and videos you have, you may not have enough storage locally, physically on this computer. If you have a lot of photos and videos, you may need to keep that library on an external hard drive. If you don't know how to do that, I have a video that I will link down below to explain that process. The other option is to optimize this Mac storage. So if I click this, it's going to start offloading the photos from this Mac and actually free up the 1.39 terabytes worth of photos and videos. I personally like to have at least one computer or one device that is downloading all of the content. That way I know 100% that all of my photos and videos are physically on a drive and not 
necessarily 100% relying on the cloud. Also, because I use Time Machine Backup, I know that Time Machine Backup is going to save every single one of these photos and videos because I'm downloading the originals. If I chose Optimize Mac Storage, Time Machine isn't gonna back up all of the high quality files and videos that you have because it's optimized. So it's not, it's kind of a false sense of safety net for your photos and videos. If you have a lot of photos and videos, move it to an external hard drive, or if you have the benefit and luxury of having multiple computers, maybe you have an old computer, dedicate that one for your photos and video library. Either way, you have the ability to either download the originals and keep them all physically on this computer, or you can optimize the photo and video library to free up space. Then you have a mixture of the files physically located on the computer as well as in the cloud. That's what that first option is back here in system settings. Whew only option one here we go the next option is to optimize the storage within apple tv for those of you who watch or rent a lot of movies via the apple tv service you can go ahead and choose optimize essentially if you've downloaded something in apple tv app it's going to remove it after you've watched it and that's their version of optimizing it i can always choose optimize and then it gives us a little green check mark to let us know that it did that now if i went into apple tv here I have my categories across the top, watch now, Apple TV plus, MLS, store and library. And this is where all of your videos and movies show up if you've purchased or rented anything through Apple iTunes. If I go to TV and choose settings and go to files, this option was now checked to automatically delete watched movies and TV shows. So if I were to uncheck this, it's essentially reverting back to not optimizing my Mac for the Apple TV storage. I'm actually gonna leave that checked because at any given time I can always go back and download something from iTunes that I purchased so it's really kind of a nice setting to have you'll never lose any of that media content that you purchased because you have it available you can stream it or you can download it now there are other options in here to optimize the file size that gets downloaded to your Mac for videos and TV shows if you are a big user of this and that's under the playback so you can actually change the download options either up to 1080p fast downloads most compatible or 480 which is just terrible quality and then you can also choose the streaming options here to either data saver or up to 4k long story short that that is the Apple TV and that's what the optimized storage for that means. The next option is the empty trash automatically. And this is kind of nice, kind of, I should say. With this turned on, it is essentially going to delete and empty your trash every 30 days. If I open up my trash in the bottom right, I probably have not done that in a very, very long time. And I don't even know how much is in here. There's a lot actually in my trash, 1,418 items to be exact. If I were to close this out, if I turn this on, it's going to say, hey, are you sure you want to empty the trash automatically? Items you uh, have in there for more than 30 days will be automatically erased. You can always change the setting back here and turn that option off if I turn it on, but nonetheless, it's an option. Clearly, I've not emptied my trash in, in a while, and it would be nice to know how much room it's taking up on my computer. So notice if I scroll down below these recommendations, I have a breakdown of what's actually taking up space on my Mac locally. Still nothing with the cloud. This is all physical files that you have on your computer. And if I scroll down to the last one, almost last one, I have actually 51 gigabytes, 51.86 gigabytes in my trash. And if I click the little eye here, I can actually see everything that's in my trash and organize it by the name, last access, sort it by the size. I can see exactly what is taking up space specifically in my trash. And I am going to delete this. I want that 50 gigs back. I'm hurting for storage. I can either empty the trash here. I can come down to the trash, right click on this and choose empty trash. I could open up the trash and then choose empty in the top right or I could go to the finder and choose empty trash in the top left there. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose empty trash and it says all of these items are gonna be permanently deleted. Sure, yes, and there it goes. So now you'll notice my trash can is empty. Trash no longer shows up underneath this category here and I've regained that 50 gigs worth of space. So now I'm back up to 3.73 terabytes versus whatever it was before. 
So that's personally going to be up to you whether you want the trash to empty automatically after 30 days. Sometimes it's a nice safety net to know if you accidentally deleted something, it's in that trash. Because remember, this is not backed up to any cloud or anything else. It's literally just in your trash can. Now there's a nice cool feature called put back for things that you've accidentally thrown away or you've thrown away and you wanna change your mind. So let me show you an example. If I open up the finder here, Let's move this to the side, or let's just minimize this. If I open up to the finder and let's just go to movies, let's say that I have this file here and I want to trash it. I'm just going to actually throw this away and drag it to the trash. Now, if I opened up the trash, if I right click on here, I have this option, not only to empty the trash or delete immediately, but I have this option to say put back. What this means is it's going to take it out of the trash and put it back exactly where it came from when I deleted it. So it's kind of nice where you can put something back if it was nested in a folder within a folder within a folder. I can choose put back and it's going to put that file that I put in the trash can back where the location from where I deleted it, which is kind of nice. So a little helpful trick there when you are deleting and emptying your trash. Let's jump back to our system settings here. Now the other options in the list are applications. On the right hand side, I have the little information for all of these. If I click any of these, it's going to do the same exact thing it did for our trash. So here I could delete one of these apps if I wanted to, or open up the application or choose show and finder to show where this application is at. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose done there. Same thing with documents. This is kind of nice. I can see it breaks it into large files. It breaks it into things that are in the downloads folder, unsupported apps, and file browser. Large files, I can see that this Final Cut library is taking up 272 gigabytes. This one is 162 and so on and so forth. If I go to the file browser tab, it breaks it down by the native folders that are within the finder, pictures folder, movies, downloads. It makes it really easy to narrow down what's actually taking up space physically on your Mac and then give you the ability to either delete those files or whatever you need to do to reclaim that storage on your Mac. The rest of the options are pretty much the same. If I go to messages, this shows me all of the text messages. So if you have your iMessage linked to your Mac, all of those text messages and videos and photos will synchronize to your Mac just like it does from your phone. All of these here are videos that collectively can take up a lot of space. I have 50 gigabytes just worth of photos and videos that are inside of text messages. So it adds up pretty quickly. If I wanted to preview any of these videos to see what they are, I can actually just select one, press the space bar on the keyboard, and it's going to play that video so I can see what it is. Press the space bar again, and it will close it back up. That's a feature called Quick Look, really, really helpful. Or I could choose Show in Finder, and it's going to narrow exactly down where this file is at. And you can see down at the bottom of the finder, I actually have the little breadcrumb trail to show me exactly where this file lives and I would have never found this file in this location because these text messages are actually kind of tucked into all of these other subfolders so that they synchronize with the cloud. This video is here and this random folder and the list goes on and on, which I clearly would have never found. Now, if you don't see these options down here at the bottom of your finder window, that's a setting under the view and you wanna choose to show or hide the path bar. So if I chose hide path bar, that path bar is no longer there can't see where that file actually lives. So I often say show path bar. That way I know exactly where these files and folders are living on my computer. I'm gonna close out of here and I actually don't need that video. So I'm just gonna choose delete and it's gonna say, hey, are you sure you wanna delete this? It will be deleted immediately, freeing up 94 megabytes of storage. I'm gonna choose delete and it will be gone just like that. So now I can choose done. We looked at applications, we look at documents iCloud Drive, we're gonna to touch this in a moment. This doesn't give us the settings in here to view the files. It only gives us an option to open up Apple ID settings, which takes us back to this main page of Apple ID, which we will look at in a second. I'm gonna go back to general, choose storage, scroll back down, click on mail. Mail does not give you the options to go through the emails. That's a whole nother ball game for deleting emails. I think that's everyone's headache, honestly. It's just email. Uh, we looked at messages. Let's take a look at music. Uh, I actually don't have any music 
physically on this Mac, I stream through either Spotify or Apple Music. So I guess, yeah, I don't really download a lot of music. I just stream it all. It's so convenient. Next, we have music creation. This is tied with GarageBand. Now, if you don't use GarageBand or you have no interest in making music, I would actually choose to remove the GarageBand sound library. Although actually, let me take that back. If you use the sound effects in iMovie or Final Cut, that is linked with this. So either don't remove it or remove it. I guess it depends on your needs and wants. If you don't do any iMovie, if you don't do any Final Cut, if you don't do any GarageBand, remove this. It'll free up about, what is it, three gigs? Yeah, about three or four gigabytes worth of storage on your Mac. And then the next option is photos, which we already talked about the optimization of photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose done. Below this, this just breaks down other users on the computer, the Mac operating system, and then system data, which will calculate and calculate because that takes forever based off of how big your hard drive is and how many files you have on there. So mine will probably be spinning for a very long time. I'll leave that there. We'll see if it eventually shows, but I'm not betting on it because it's going to take forever. It doesn't allow you to do anything. It's just giving you a visual of how much space is taking up on the system data. So as far as the Mac goes and optimizing your physical Mac, these are the settings and tools built in to help you manage what is actually taking up space on your Mac and identifying where the files and folders are and giving you the ability to quickly delete them, find them and free up some of the space on your Mac. So now let's go ahead and jump into iCloud and how we can optimize the iCloud storage for your Mac, iPhone and iPad. So let's go ahead and look at the iCloud settings specifically to the iCloud drive. The settings are still located within the system settings. So if we close that back out, if we go back up to the Apple on the top left, choose system settings, we are going to select the very top option on the left for the Apple ID. Within here, we have iCloud about halfway down. If we select that, very similar to the graph or the visual representation that we saw for the Mac, this shows the storage within your iCloud that you pay for. iCloud by default only gives you five gigabytes of storage, which is completely useless for anyone storing photos and videos. So chances are you're probably paying for more storage, but this is a visual graph of that storage that's being used within the cloud, not necessarily on this computer. Underneath here, we have this option that says optimize Mac storage. So it's saying the full contents of iCloud Drive will be stored on this Mac if you have enough space. Older documents will be stored only in iCloud when space is needed. Now that can be a little confusing. And so I reached out to the Apple support and they explained that when you have this setting turned on, if you don't open up a folder or a file after 30 days, it automatically offloads from your Mac or your iPhone or your iPad and puts it and stores it only in iCloud, but you still have that thumbnail version of the file or folder or whatever it may be. So with this setting turned on, essentially what it means is if we open up the finder, on the left-hand side, you should see an option for iCloud Drive. Now, if you don't see anything in the left-hand side here, that could be because of your view settings, you may be hiding your sidebar. So if it looks like this, you need to go to view and choose show sidebar. Also, notice it's broken down into favorites, iCloud. If you click the little triangle there, you will hide all of these categories. So you wanna make sure that if I click the little arrow here, I can now unfold that to see all of the choices. So we want to find iCloud Drive. So iCloud Drive is going to be located under iCloud. And you'll notice that when this is selected, I see all of the files within iCloud Drive. I have a whole nother video dedicated to iCloud Drive, not only for your Mac, but also your iPhone, which I will link down below. But this is purely talking about the optimization of iCloud on these devices. So you'll notice that all of these folders have this little cloud with the downward arrow. This tells me visually that these folders are currently only in iCloud, but they're not physically taking up space on this computer. Now, taking a step back, this is the main iCloud Drive folder that synchronizes with all of your devices, but there's additional settings that allow you to synchronize specifically your desktop and documents folder that are on your Mac 
with iCloud as well. If I actually take a step back, go back to system settings here, if we go to iCloud Drive, notice how it's turned on. If I select this, I wanna choose the options and this first checkbox here. So this is telling me that I am synchronizing the desktop and documents folder of this Mac so that it shoots out to the cloud. That way, if I have another Mac, I'm going to see exactly the same thing on both desktops of both computers. That's why this option exists. If this is checked, it's all pure convenience to synchronize multiple files. To give you an example of what that looks like, currently on my desktop and documents folder, if I choose desktop, I have 249 items physically on this desktop, and those are all bundled into stacks over here, nicely organized into these little piles to help the clutter of the unorganization that I truly have. But if I go to my phone here, that's using the same Apple ID. If I go to the files app, I can navigate to browse. Notice in the top left desktop, it has the same exact 249 files. So if I touch that, I'll be able to see everything that's on my computer here. Same with my phone. On the computer here, you'll notice that in the column with the little cloud, the iCloud status, some of them have the little cloud, but then some of them have the download arrow. This tells me where this file actually is. If I just hover my cursor on top of that, it shows that it's downloaded. If I go to the one with the arrow, it shows it's in iCloud. Any given time, if I right clicked on one that is currently on this Mac, I can choose remove download and it's going to offload that file and no longer take up storage on this Mac. It's just keeping a thumbnail version of it. It's 169 kilobytes versus if I actually click now the cloud here, it's gonna download that file. So now it's a full resolution. The file size is 27 megabytes. So a huge difference of storage. So let's, let's take a step back and let's walk through that again. Any of these files that are physically on the Mac within iCloud Drive, if I right click on it, I can choose remove download. And all that means is it's gonna offload it from the Mac and only keep the high resolution on the cloud. Let's actually change the name of this file. Do South Dakota image. Notice I haven't opened it up yet, so it didn't download it. I just altered the name. But to show you how the syncing works, if I go back to my phone here, go to desktop, I'm just gonna do a search for South Dakota. And there it is, South Dakota image. And notice on my phone also, it has the little cloud icon because it's optimized on my phone as well. Now, if I touch this, notice it's going to download it to my phone, but it's not downloading it to my computer. And here is this photograph. If I touch and hold on it, I can choose delete. And you'll notice in a few moments, it just got removed from my computer. So that's the whole purpose of iCloud and the syncing capabilities, allowing you to keep all of your devices on the same page and being able to choose what's actually taking up space and what's not taking up space. So desktop and documents, natively to your Mac are the only folders that have the ability to sync within iCloud Drive. So that means that if you have things in your downloads folder, if you have things in your movies folder, if you have things in your music folder, pictures folder, all of that does not go to iCloud Drive at all. It physically only lives here on your computer. With the rare exception of iCloud Photos, which naturally is in your pictures folder, but this can live anywhere, an external hard drive, but because iCloud Photos is somewhat different than iCloud Drive, it's still within the same iCloud storage. iCloud Photos is separate from iCloud Drive. So let's go back to iCloud Drive here. Same thing with documents. Here are the documents that I have in that folder. You'll notice some of them have the little cloud icon, some of them don't. And notice if I right click on the, the categories up here, I can actually choose iCloud status. That way I can see always a little icon there for all of the files. We can see this file here is not downloaded to the computer, but these files are. Now, if we go back to system settings, choose done there to go back. So when this setting is turned on, when I talk to the Apple support, they said that if you don't use a file within 30 days, that's the moment that it gets offloaded from your device whether it be your iPhone, your iPad, or your Mac. Keep that in mind. If you have a whole bunch of files that you aren't using, instead of going through all of them and right-clicking to remove download, 
After 30 days, it's designed to offload from your computer to optimize and free up that space. Now at any given time, you can choose a whole entire folder. If I went to this travel folder, I could right click on it and choose remove download. Everything that's in that folder will be removed. So if I were to download these, let's click on the little cloud here. If I go back now, notice travel does not have the little cloud icon. But if I, let's actually open this up. So there's two items, there's two PDFs in this travel folder. If I right click on the folder itself and choose remove download, notice it's going to offload both of these files and they're no longer taking up space on my Mac. So it's optimizing the Mac storage on my Mac. So that's pretty much the options for optimizing the space and saving space on your Mac. Now let's go ahead and jump back to the phone and let's look at the same exact settings. The whole concept and premise of how you use it is identical. What's a little bit frustrating with the iPhone and iPad, even though you have the ability to optimize these files, you don't have the same optimized Mac storage like you do for the iPhone and iPad. You have it for the photos, but not for iCloud Drive. We're gonna go into settings, choose the top choice for my Apple ID, we're gonna to go to iCloud and we'll go to Photos. So Photos, it gives me the option to optimize iPhone storage or download and keep originals, which makes sense. It does the same exact thing that the, that the computer does. It's going to offload those photos. I can still see them, but the moment that I want to see the high quality photo or video, I have to touch it and allow it to download. If I don't have internet access, it's not gonna download and you're not gonna see the full quality high resolution content. Let's take a step back, go to iCloud in the top left, and let's go to iCloud Drive. Here, it does not give us that choice. All it does is give us the ability to either sync iCloud to this phone, or it gives us an option to manage the storage, which again, we can see what is currently taking up space in iCloud. So notice we have our travel folder down there at the bottom. It's got those two PDFs in there, and that's about all I can see. If I exit out of here, go back into files, we're gonna go back to my desktop. A lot of these pictures have that little cloud icon in the top right to represent that it's not the full quality photo on here. So let's take this one of the kids, for example, which would be 7.3 megabytes, or even the one below it, with it, which is 23 megabytes. So if I touched one of these, it's gonna download it, it's gonna show waiting, it's gonna show the circle that it's downloaded, and after it's done, that little icon with the cloud is going to disappear. So now it opens up, it lets me know that this file is physically downloaded to this device locally. If I choose done in the top right, it no longer has that little icon. If I wanted to offload that file, if I touch and hold on that picture, you'll notice at the very top, I have the choice to remove download. If I touch that, it's now going to remove it physically, taking up space on my phone or iPad, iPad, is identical, but by choosing remove download, it now offloaded that 23 megabytes and I just regained that space back on my phone here. Same thing goes with the folder. If we go back to iCloud Drive, if I touch and hold on desktop, I could say download now, and it's just going to download all of those files directly to my phone, which probably is gonna take a while because I don't think the majority of them were downloaded. So if I touch that folder, notice it's now downloading all of the files that I really didn't want to download. So I wish there was an option to actually stop that because now that I initiated it, I instantly regret doing that. So as you can see, they're all trying to download, which is most likely gonna take time because this whole desktop, if I go back to my computer here, right click on desktop, do get info. Oh, it's only 1.83 gigs, so that's fine. Uh, so it's gonna download all of that and then I can always go back touch and hold on that folder and I will be able to do remove download instead of download now. So that's essentially how the iCloud works with offloading the files. I think that by default for iCloud Drive on the iPhones and iPads, it automatically has this optimized Mac storage. So you don't have that option to turn it on or off. I think it just does it for you automatically. And I wish Apple would say that because I know a lot of these files here are not physically on my phone. It's it's not taking up that space. So if I go back, let's go to the main settings, go to general, go to iPhone storage. And I can see that I'm actually only taking up 122 gigs out of 256 gigabytes on my phone. Yet my whole Apple photo library is like 1.2 terabytes. And uh, my iCloud drive 
has 80 gigabytes in the documents, 79 gigabytes in messages. So optimizing your storage really does free up a lot of space. The only downfall that I can think of is if you want a video or a photo or a file when you don't have any internet access or the internet speed is not the greatest, that's kind of the Achilles heel of iCloud or really any cloud service. If you don't have access to the internet, you're not gonna have access to these files in the cloud. So that is iCloud optimization, optimizing your Mac, your iPhone, your iPad, giving you the ability to free up space on your device and use the cloud space as it's intended to. Just know the pros and cons. So thank you so much for watching. If you wanna to continue to support my channel, go ahead, hit that thanks button. And if you learned something new, go ahead, hit that subscribe, tap that little bell, and we'll see you next time.